Okay, so welcome back. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to actually find the matches. And the way we're going to be doing this today is we're going to find if any piece has a match, and then we're going to do something to make sure that we can see that visually. So the main idea behind this is actually pretty simple. We want to take a look at our board here. So I'm just going to draw in something that looks kind of like our board. We're going to have our dots arranged. And then essentially the idea behind it is we'll choose any dot here. So let's say we choose this one. We're going to call this our first dot or our dot to choose or whatever you want to call it. And then we want to look to the left until we either hit the board or until we find a dot that's color is not the same as the first one. So then this would be a dot with a column less than one. So column minus one and the same row. And then we could also check column minus two, but we don't actually go, have to go any further over than just two in that direction. Because even if we have like a match five, um, there's no way that you can get a match five unless you're moving up the middle one, in which case you only have to look two over or two to the right or two up or two down. Uh, even if it's like a, if it's a match four, then we would be moving on one up and these two are the same. So we'd only ever have to look two in any direction. Um, so that's another limiter that we can put on that. And then we'll do the same thing to the right. We'll look at column plus one row, column, or sorry, column plus one row, column plus two row. Same thing with up and down. Um, column row plus one, column row plus two, column row minus one, column row minus two. And then we don't have to do those minus two plus twos if we reach the edge of the board. We can just stop. And then we can test to see if our number of matches is at least three. And if it is three, then we can highlight those as being things that we consider a match. So let's take a look at the code here. Okay, so this is where we left off. If we take a look at our program right now, we should have our board uh, filled with pieces randomly. And then we should be able to swipe to control to move the pieces. I don't know when there's a match yet, but we can change directions here. Okay, so now we're going to make them actually find out if there's a match where they are. So we're going to open up our dot script, uh, or game piece, or whatever you call that script. I'm opening mine up in Visual Studio here, and I want to create a new method all the way down here at the bottom. So what I want to do, actually before I do that, I'm going to create a new variable too. So up at the top, I'm going to make a public, because uh, I want to use this for debugging, but then when I come back, I'll probably want to change it. Uh, I want to call this a Boolean. Uh, a Boolean is something that's either true or false. It's only ever one of those two states. And I'm going to call this Boolean is matched, and I want to set it to false by default. So when the game starts, it's going to think that it's not matched. So down here, what I want to do is I'm going to create a new method, and I'm going to call this void find matches. And I'm not going to pass any values into this at the moment. And this is just kind of sketching it out. So our main idea was we start where we are. Um, we can't look left if our column is at zero. So we'll say if column is greater than zero. Jacob Hanway, Jacob Richardson, and Sam Fish, please report to the office. We can't look left if our column is um, zero. So column has to be greater than zero. And a column has to be less than whatever the width of the board is, board.width minus one. So that's what we have to do in order to check left and right. Now, let's start by checking left. So we're going to say, uh, we'll create a new game object. We'll call this left.one. And this is going to be equal to board dot all dot and we want to find thing that's to directly to the left of us so column minus one row uh, okay and then we want to say if column is greater than one and column is actually I'm gonna have to do this part here um, 
Okay, so we'll choose our, our left dot and we'll create a game object. We'll call it right dot one. And this is equal to board dot all dots. And we want to find the column plus one row. And we want to check to see if these are the same kind of dot that we are right now. So in order to do this, I'm going to use something called the tag system that Unity has built in. So if I pop back over to Unity, I want to show you what I mean by that. So I kind of, I already recorded this video once, so this is already set up, but I'll show you how to set it up yourself. I'm going to go to my dots prefabs. I'm going to click, click on the dark green dot. And then I want to go up here and look at this right underneath the name. We've got a tag and we've got the layer. Um, I want to make it, right now, your object is going to say that it's untagged. So what I want to do is I want to take this. So I'm going to go to where it says tag, and then go down to click add tag. And then in this new window, uh, if you click the plus button, you can add a new tag. So say that we had a, I don't know, a puce dot. We could do that. And then if you click save, that doesn't actually apply it to the object you were looking at, that just creates that as a new tag that you can do stuff with. So, for example, I would go to my tags and create a dark green dot tag, and then go back to that object and assign it as dark green dot. Did the same thing with green dot, indigo dot, orange dot, red dot, salmon dot, teal dot, and then yellow dot. And so I made sure that all of these had a tag. So what I'm going to do is go back here, and right now I'm checking one to the left and one to the right. I'm going to say if left dot one dot tag is equal to uh, this game objects tag, this dot game objects dot tag, and right dot one dot tag is equal to this game object dot tag. So we're checking to see if those are equal to our uh, game objects tag. Then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say that those are matched, and we're also going to do something to make them appear a little grayed out. So I'm going to say, let's say here, uh, let's do left out one dot get component and I want to get the dot component from this object dot and then I want to say dot is matched is true and then I'm going to do the same thing for right dot one so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it there and exchange this left with right okay uh, so it's going to register as true and then uh, what I'm going to do is, oh, I'm also going to register this game object as true. Sorry, this dot game object uh, dot is matched. Or sorry, I don't need to do that. I can just say is matched is true. I don't know what I'm thinking today. There we go. Cool. Now I'm going to add a method up here in my update method. I'm going to check to see if is matched is true. And we'll say if is matched. We don't have to actually say is matched equals true. You can just say is matched, and that means true. Then um, I'm going to make this specific sprite appear a little bit grayed out. So I'm going to say sprite renderer my sprite equals get component, meaning I want to get the sprite renderer component from the object that this script is attached to. Sprite renderer. And then I'm going to do my sprite dot color is equal to a new color. And I want it to be the same color it was, just grayed out. So we'll do um, 0, 0, 0. And that means it's going to be white, because I'm passing in no colors. 1, 1, 1 is black. But then I want its transparency to be 0.2. Okay. Now, in order to test this, I need to call my find matches method at some point. If I call it in the update method, which is what I'm going to do for the moment, it's going to be kind of um, system intensive. So we're only going to want to find matches if we're um, if we actually just move the piece. So in my update method here, I'm going to call find matches. Okay. 
So I'm going to save that script. Now I only have this put in for left and right of the game object, but let's pop back into Unity and let's take a look to see if it works. We should only be finding horizontal matches. So as soon as this compiles, we'll give it a test. Let's hit play. All right, and there we go. There's a horizontal match right there. I don't see any other horizontal matches in the scene. So let's try it again. See if we get our horizontal match grayed out. And there we go. No other horizontal matches in the scene. And one more time. Uh, grayed out. No other horizontal matches. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to pop back here into my dot script. And I'm going to copy this method. So command C to copy. Command V to paste. And this time, instead of looking for the column, I'm going to look for the row. And I'm going to compare that to board.height. And instead of being a left dot, I'm going to call this up dot. And then instead of being column minus one, this is going to be column and then row plus one. And then I'm going to call this one right dot instead of, or sorry, down dot instead of right dot. So down dot. And then this is going to be at column row minus one. Row minus one. And I'm going to change these objects here. So I'm going to take up dot, I'm going to copy this, I'm going to put it wherever I had left dot. And same thing with down dot. Copy this and put it wherever I saw right dot. So I'm going to save this. And I was wrong about the colors. 0, 0, 0 is black. So let's make this 1, 1, 1. Okay, cool. So let's hop back into Unity. And if we hit play, we should be able to find our, um, our matches right away. So, okay. Looks like this one doesn't have any matches. Oop. And I have an index out of range error. I'm willing to bet I know what that is, but let's take a look. Okay, so it's from line 118, which is where we're finding stuff. So index out of range means that I'm trying to call something that's outside of an array's range, meaning how high or how low it goes. So uh, 4.height rows. Oh, ha. Huh. This needs to not be column. This needs to be row. Uh, okay, cool. So let me jump back into Unity here and fix this. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're always thinking column is x and row is y, which can be confusing because if you've ever done matrix algebra, you have to consider your um, a matrix is always rows by columns. So it can be confusing. So let's take a look at this. We got green, green, green. Here we've got dark green, dark green, dark green. Dark green, dark green. And then we got uh, another dark green, another dark green, another dark green. And then over here, we've got indigo, indigo, indigo. And then yellow, yellow, yellow. Cool. So if I hit play again, let's see if we find more matches. Nice. Now the other thing about this is since I'm calling it from the update method, it finds the matches as I change the board. This isn't how we're going to want to do it. We don't want that find matches running in the update method every single frame because it's very computationally intensive. But um, it is kind of how we're going to going to use this going forward. It's the, the framework we're going to use, not necessarily the exact method. OK, well, um, there we go. We're finding matches on our board. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you learned anything today, please feel free to give it a like. Um, you can follow me on Twitter for updates about when I post new videos. Other than that, have a wonderful day.